This is my review of the Skechers Max Road 6. And the name pretty much gives everything away for this shoe. It is max cushioned, as you can tell by looking at that thick chunk of midsole. And it's made for the road. There are a lot of things to like about this shoe. Let's get into it. Alright guys, let's get started off with some disclosures. Skechers was good enough to send me this shoe for the purpose of review. However, they're not paying me and they're not going to get to see this video before you do here on YouTube. Now let's start off with price. Because I think the price is really where Skechers has hit it home with the Max Road 6. You can pick this shoe up at Roadrunner Sports for $130. Now, just so you know, it is listed for $145 on the Skechers site. So if you are thinking about getting a pair, head over to Roadrunner Sports and I will place a link in the show notes below just to make it easy. Now, just in case you're wondering what you would use this shoe for, this is going to be best suited for your longer runs for your easier runs for your recovery runs so ideally this is going to give you a lot of protection against the road a lot of protection against the impact forces of running so it's perfect for just logging those daily miles when you're not asking anything specific from the shoe like intervals or tempo work but i've got something to say about tempo work but we'll talk about that when we talk about the ride sketches does claim that a us men size 9 will tip the scale at 10.9 ounces or 309 grams however in my size a us men size 13 it tips the scale at 13.6 ounces or 385 grams so look, it's not light, but the Max Road 6 is not trying to be something that it isn't. It has an area that it excels at, and obviously an area that it won't excel at like race day performance. But you won't be buying this shoe to go and compete races in. You'll be buying it for those easy days, those recovery days, and your long days. I have taken this out on just shy of a three hour run and it performed exceedingly well. So even though it's heavy, it still does the job. Okay, let's talk about the materials. And of course, we'll start at the top. We'll work our way down. Let me just hold this up and show you how thick and plush this heel collar is. It's definitely like putting your foot inside a pillow. The shoe just wraps around your foot. Lovely. It's got a very nice step and feel. The heel counter is quite rigid. You can feel it in there, although it's not as rigid as some other daily trainers that I've tested. The heel counter is definitely prominent and I didn't experience any heel slip. Got a nice pull tab right here to help get the shoe on your foot, although I haven't used it and every heel tab on a shoe I never use, but I still like to see it. I think it's a good aesthetic touch. Now the upper is a breathable engineered mesh. At least that's what it says on Sketch's site. And I would agree that it is an engineered mesh. Breathable I don't know. And that actually is the perfect setup for my main problem with this shoe. Now I should just remind you that I do live in Florida and at the time of my testing this shoe, it is the middle of summer. We're in August. So in defense of the Max Road 6, now is not the best time of year to be testing this shoe in my location. The upper is an engineered mesh, but it's quite thick. And while, yes, it may be breathable, I can see these little holes machined into the upper to increase breathability. I found this shoe to be like pulling on a woolly jumper. It really kept my feet nice and toasty when they were inside. And that's great if you are running in an area with cool attempts. But in the middle of summer, in the south with high humidity, this shoe does soak up a lot of sweat. And that for me has been my biggest drawback to the Max Road 6. So I'm glad I got that out of the way because there are a lot of good things about this shoe. And I don't want to put all of you off by saying that it's a very warm ride. As far as the overlays go, you can see the branding right here on the side. And these are all 3D printed overlays. And they're pretty minimal right here around the main part of the upper. But when you come around the heel collar, in fact, the whole heel area from about here all the way around. This is covered in like a TPU overlay. We have an underlay coming around the toe box just to keep that upper off your foot. And then we've got some overlays coming right along the edge of the eyelet chain. And then each individual eyelet has a little overlay around it just to give it some support. Now look, when you consider how thick and plush this heel collar is, the tongue, well, the tongue is exactly the same. It's super plush. It is like a pillow on top of your foot. And it does provide a lot of protection when you cinch down the laces. Now the tongue is not gusseted, but there is a lace loop right in the middle. Now let's just talk about the laces for a second because I don't know how well you can actually see this, but these laces are quite stretchy. And that's absolutely fine, but I did find that I had to pay a little more attention when I was lacing this shoe compared to some other shoes. And what I mean by that is because the laces are so stretchy, I really had to pull them tight and then tie them in a bow while they were still held taut. And I needed to do that in order to get this upper to lock down nicely across my midfoot. Now, once it was done, I had no problems at all. I didn't experience any heel slip. I didn't experience any movement in my foot when I was running, but I noticed that I did have to pay attention to actually me lacing a little more than usual. Oh, saying that I didn't have any movement in my foot does remind me that I wanted to tell you about the upper and how it feels when it gets wet. Because I know it said it's very warm and it does soak up a lot of sweat. So on every one of my runs that I've put into this shoe, the shoe has been soaking wet. I've had to come home and stuff it with newspaper and let it dry out before I took it out again. But here's what was surprising. When I was running for several hours in this shoe and the shoe was soaking wet, I didn't experience any loosening of the upper. And I think that's pretty high praise for an engineered mesh like this. Because looking at it and how soft and pliable it feels, it does feel like that when it gets wet, 
it may sort of stretch out just a little bit. And I didn't find that to be the case. From the start of my run until the end of my run, I had a good lockdown all through my foot. As far as the toe box goes, I found that I had plenty of room. Now I have fairly narrow feet, so that's probably not saying something, but if I hold it up, I think it does look fairly wide. But if you did have wider feet, I think this upper is going to work well for you just because it does feel a little pliable. And if I hold the shoe up like this, you can see just a little bit of sole flare where the midsole is sticking out just a little bit past the upper, all right? Keep that in mind. Now let's come down to the midsole. And this is the most prominent thing about this shoe. The stack height is 41 in the heel, 35 in the forefoot for a six millimeter drop. And that is every bit of 41 millimeters in it. I mean, it just looks massive. But here's the thing, it doesn't feel absolutely massive. And look, I know, looking at this, I would think that this shoe is very unstable. And that wasn't my experience with it. And that's actually why I brought up the sole flare here because there is a wide base to this shoe. You can see that there is a lot of contact area for the ground. But the midsole is Skechers Hyperburst Ice. And it is a dual density midsole and, I, and I'm guessing that that dual density is just to add a little bit of support and guidance or perhaps it's just to add a little bit of structure to the midsole to stop it from collapsing. I don't know but it works for them. You see this label right here, carbon infused. There is a carbon infused H plate within the Hyperverse Ice midsole. Now my thought is that this is going to give just a little bit of pop as you roll off your toe, but I honestly can't say that I noticed it. In fact, in a shoe of this stack height, I can't imagine what the H plate is actually doing. Maybe it's just marketing speak for sketches so they can say that they've got a, a carbon infused plate in the toe of the Max Road 6. And if that's the case, then I'm absolutely fine with that because they haven't charged us for it. Remember, $130. Or maybe that H plate is just to give a little support to the giant 35 millimeters of stack on the forefoot. I know that Skechers has put a ton of R&D into this shoe and of course they are a business. They wouldn't have added materials unless they absolutely had to, but I don't know. If you have run in the Max Road 6, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Before we move down to the outsole, there is Skechers Arch Fit insert and I'm trying to get it out, but it is, there's this rubberized bottom to the Arch Fit insole and it just kind of sticks to the bottom of your shoe just a little bit. So it's, it's tricky to get out. But now that I've got it out, we can see that there is a lot of extra padding there. It is remarkably comfortable. This does contribute to giving the shoe a little bit more squish. And because it is the Arch Fit insert, it is going to give those of you that need a little arch support a little arch support. Typically, I don't need any arch support, or at least when I don't have it, I don't notice that I need it, but I do like having it in the Skechers shoes. Also, because it is fully removable, you are free to put in the insoles of your choice. And then coming down to the outsole, this blue that you see on here, this is Goodyear rubber. This Goodyear rubber is going to make this shoe very resilient. And this amount of rubber on the outsole is going to mean that you are going to have the potential, the choice to run in this shoe for a long time. It just isn't going to wear down with that amount of rubber. In fact, at the making of this this video, I don't see, is that possible? I don't see any wear on the bottom. Now there's a little bit of dirt. I did notice when I put these on the desk to show you guys that I haven't made a mess of this heel collar, just, I don't know, are my feet dirty when I put them in? I don't know. I'm quite impressed that this lateral heel area is not showing any wear whatsoever. Impressive. Anyway, shoe's gonna last a long time. And finally, let's talk about the ride, or let's talk about my experience with the ride. Keep in mind that I am a six foot seven person who weighs 185 pounds. 185 pounds is about 84 kilograms. So that means I'm not incredibly light. So I am putting a little bit of weight into every step that I take in this shoe. And with that said, I found the Hyperburst Ice midsole, the whole thing, to be very comfortable. From the get-go, when I put my foot in, it wasn't overly plush, it wasn't firm. It was just right in that sweet spot. It was a nice shoe to put on for my easy runs. Now look at this. When I hold this up, can you see this rocker? Can you see this kind of shape? It's difficult to see, but there is a prominent rocker coming from heel to toe. And I would say that if you are a heel striker, then you're really gonna benefit from this rocker geometry. I am a heel striker, especially when I'm running easy, so I was able to take advantage of the whole thing. But I did happen to take this shoe out for a tempo run. And on this tempo run, I warmed up for a couple of miles. And then on the tempo part, I took it up to tempo pace for around five miles, and that was when the shoe really spoke to me. I understood what the shoe was trying to tell me. Now, I don't want anyone to think that I am suggesting that you buy this shoe when you want to run faster than you normally would. Remember, it's not light. There's a lot of material going on here. It's a very big chunk of midsole. But because of this midsole and this rocker technology, I found that picking up the pace was very enjoyable. And I was surprised at how responsive this shoe felt when I really put it to the test when I started running a little faster. And for me, my tempo pace at this time of year is around seven minutes a mile, maybe six, 50 minutes a mile. It's obviously not obscenely fast, but not slow, especially considering with the speed that I usually run my easy runs. But when I picked up the pace, the shoe just seemed to land nicely. And then I put this down to the rocker. It seemed like it would roll me through my step very quickly and efficiently. It actually felt good 
to pick up the speed. Now, of course, it is a little heavy. I had to ignore the weight, but the actual experience of running fast was one that I was not expecting. I was very happy to find it. But I don't want you to buy this shoe just because I said that it feels good when you're running fast. Yes, you can run fast in it and it will feel good, but you've got other shoes to do that. You are going to be buying this shoe to take care of yourself, to take care of your body. When you don't want to get beat up when you're going out for your long runs or you're going out for a nice easy run and you just want to baby your feet, get lots of cushioning, get lots of that plush feeling around your heel collar, the Skechers Max Road 6 is what you're going to reach for. So guys, it's your turn. I want to hear from you. Have you ever run in any of the Skechers Max Road series? I haven't run in a Max Road since the Max Road 4 and I love the Max Road 4. The Max Road 6 has certainly put on a little bit of weight since the Max Road 4, but it's offering a lot more in terms of the ride and the feeling and what you're gonna get out of this shoe. Oh, and if you don't have this shoe, let me know if you're going to pick one up, or let me know what your easy day, recovery day shoe of choice is. And with that, it's Matt B. This has been my review of the Skechers Max Road 6. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.